All right, got another PGA DFS video here for you guys. This time it's gonna be the 2018 FedEx St. Jude Classic. Um, in case you guys didn't know, Daniel Berger won this event the last two years he's played in it, so two straight years he's won it. Phil Mickelson is a course horse at this course, but before we get into that, let's just do a quick recap of last week. Last week we extended our streak of picking the winner to 13 straight weeks by picking Bryson DeChambeau. He won in a tiebreaker over another one that we picked, Kyle Stanley, and also Ben on. So pretty good, two out of three players that were going for first there, um, we picked them. Um, another breakdown of the stats, six in the top 10, 13 in the top 25, 90% of them made the cut in our player pool, and then 85% of our value players made the cut. So overall, just a very good week again. Um, but let's get into the key stats for this week. We're obviously gonna be looking at course history. We always look at that. Gonna be looking at strokes gained approach. Scrambling is gonna be a key one as well. Strokes gained around the green, and then strokes gained putting. Phil Mickelson kind of checks the boxes on all those, so if you can get them, you want to get them in there. Um, that, let's not overlook Justin Johnson or Brooks Kepka. Um, they're obviously going to be great players. They're world-class players. The only thing you worry about with DJ is if he withdraws. He did it um, three years ago, so it is a worry there. I don't. I do not think Brooks Kepka is going to withdraw because he's coming back from the injury. I think he wants to get some more current firm going. Then Stenson, I don't think you really have to worry about him withdrawing. I do really like him this week. He's the best course fit out of all of them. Obviously, Phil's history, you can't really avoid that. Same thing goes for Daniel Berger. Winning the tournament uh, two straight times in a row. You probably won't do that again, obviously, but I do think he'll make the cut and probably has a good chance to get into top 20 again. So, obviously, he's going to be a good pick. They're all really good course fits as well. They all check the boxes on those stats that we want to look at. So none of them are gonna be bad plays. The best option is probably gonna go with the cheapest one there that I have the most confidence in, and that's gonna be Stenson. Getting to the mid-tier plays here, I really do like Tony Finau. He's just a world-class player as well. He does check the boxes. He doesn't have the most course history here. Um, he doesn't have any, so, I mean, in the last four years. So that's the only worry there, but I mean, he is a course fit. Steve Tricker's just a cut maker. He's got to check the boxes. Obviously on the Champions Tour, he's won two like two tournaments in the last month or so. Hasn't missed a cut there. He's a very good player. You got Charles Howell, who's just he's 18th in scrambling. He's a cut maker. His course history here is a T26 cut, T28. So we're probably gonna be looking at the T30 range for him this week. And then Chris Kirk, he's just been on a streak, eight and nine straight cuts. And he's tied for 11th in scrambling. So I do really like him as well. Getting into the low tier players here. Um, I do like Corey Connors. His current form is why I like him. He's not the best course fit, and he doesn't have the most course history. He did have a T8 here last year, though, so that is nice. That is what we want to see. Ches Reeve is definitely a course fit. His current form isn't the greatest, but I do still really like him. He's a great course fit. Joel Damon. People are finally getting to realize how good of a golfer is. I've been talking about him for like four weeks now. Um, he's just in good form. Three straight top 20s. He had a T18 here last year, so I do like him. I'm glad people are finally coming around to that. Ben Crane is the guy I want to concentrate on the most here out of this range though. He's coming from a T10 here, T40, T37, and then he also won it. He's a great course fit, he's 14th in scrambling, and he's made six straight cuts. So he's just in perfect form. You could also go with Tom Hoagie. He's a course history, course fit, and he's in okay form. Getting to the turn he plays here, Brian Gay is a guy I do not want to play too much. I featured him in my videos at least twice now in his last two tournaments, so this is the third one. Um, do not want to overplay that, but he is a good course fit. I do like him. Luke Liss is a guy a lot of people are going to be owning. I get why. He checks all the boxes. He has decent course history here as well. I just I would rather play Chris Kirk for a little bit cheaper than Luke Liss, so that's my only thing. I do get it. Um, Grayson Murray is a guy who was leading the tournament last week and then ended up shooting an 80 on the last round of the week, so you never know what you're going to get with him. I do like Aaron Baddeley again. Um, definitely more of a tournament option. He's going to be my lowest owned player out of the whole player pool but he does check the boxes a little bit. All right, TVA Tyrone Van Oswegen. He's not a bad course fit. I do mind him. He's gonna be more of a term option for me as is Chad Campbell. Um, Chad Campbell's, he's got good course history here. Not a bad course fit. Matt Jones is a guy I do wanna to touch on a little bit more. Um, he had a T13 last, um, in his last event, and he also is coming off a T18 at this course, a T26, and a T3. So he's a good course fit. He does check some of the boxes. If you're going under 7K, he's the guy you wanna go with. And then Vaughn Taylor, he's another guy that's checking some boxes, has pretty good course history here as well. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this video. I'm gonna be posting more videos. Got the US Open next week. Looking forward to it, guys. Thanks.